Scrooge is here with a rare and expensive game, and that game today is Quadrant for your Atari 2600, which features label art that's just a screenshot and a statement that it's fun times four. Quickly, what's fun times four? Do you know? Let's go ahead and find out by popping Quadrant in my Atari 7800 Pro system and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Quadrant, quadrant, quadrant. quadrant was published by Atari and carries a copyright year of 1983. It was programmed by Steve Woita, who also programmed Taz for the 2600 and helped program Kid Chameleon for the Sega Genesis. Quadrant was released as a mail-away only game through the Atari Club, and it's believed that only 10,000 copies were made, making this one of the rarest games Atari released for the 2600. Quadrant is also unique as it was the only game Atari made for the 2600 that features digitized speech. Quadrant is a single screen action game for one player only and only has one standard mode of difficulty. According to the manual, a long time ago, possibly in a galaxy far, far away, the peaceful land of Quad was invaded by the cruel captors who imprisoned all the inhabitants. Now it's up to you to rescue the prisoners called Runts with your special weapon called the Phaser Ball. So you're telling me I get to rescue fruit-shaped Willy Wonka candy? Sweet. The screen is comprised of a horizontal strip, vertical strip, and the cage full of delicious Runts in the center. In the horizontal strip, you can press left or right to switch sides or touch the upper or lower walls to go to the vertical strip. Occasionally, a runt will make a run for it, but because they are just pieces of dumb candy, they will try to run into the electric walls all the way to the left or the right. Your goal is to try to intercept the runaway before he fries himself. While in the vertical strip, you can press up or down to change sides and touch the sides of the walls to go back to the horizontal strip. It is in the vertical strip that the enemy captors show up. Your goal here is to shoot them with your phaser ball by pressing the button and quickly switching sides to catch your phaser ball before it leaves the screen. You start the game with three phaser balls and you lose one every time you touch an enemy captor or fail to catch a phaser ball you threw. Your game ends either when you lose all three of your phaser balls or when the white line at the top of the screen called the critter counter, which decreases every time a runt gets fried or you fail to destroy a captor, disappears. The critter counter, however, does get restored after you complete five waves and enter a special crazed wave where you get bonus points for every remaining phaser ball you have left and face a random assortment of captors. Speaking of assortments of captors, there are five, the standard goons, the snags, which have a middle that occasionally disappear, allowing your phaser ball to pass right through them unharmed, yo-yos that return the same way they came, nods, which are like faster goons, and brats that move in a difficult to hit weaving pattern. And speaking of assortment of grunts, there are also five strawberries, oranges, green apples, grapes, and my favorite bananas. But that's the candy. In the game, there's only one generic type of grunt that runs into electrified walls like a fly in a bug zapper. My guess is it wasn't too hard for the captors to take over the land of Quad. Point-wise, you get 10 points for every goon you destroy, 50 points for snags, 200 points for yo-yos, 500 points per nod, 1,000 points per brat. You also get 1,000 points for each completed wave and 100 points per run saved. At the beginning of the crazed wave, if you have one phaser ball left, you get 2,500 points, two phaser balls are 5,000 points, and all three phaser balls will get you 10,000 points. You also get 1,000 points during the crazed wave for every fifth capture you destroy. Graphically speaking, I thought the game looked pretty nice with the glowing walls and decent sized characters, although the phaser ball could have been larger. I also thought the sounds of the game were nice as well, including the quadrant voice that repeats three times and increases in speed on successive waves. However, it did bother the math nerd in me that Quadrant was said three times when it should have either been said four times or changed into Tri Run. Also, I should note that due to how much memory it takes to say Quadrant, the screen goes blank while it does, and on some TVs, they will temporarily switch to a blue screen when this happens and fail to play all the Quadrant voices since the TV thinks there is nothing going on due to the blank screen. And this is a family-friendly game, however, its difficulty may keep it out of the reach of younger players. At the time I researched on eBay, one loose copy with a missing end label sold for $72, and two copies with manuals sold for $155, including shipping. So what did I think of Quadrant? Well, first of all, this is one of those games where if you just try to pick it up and play it without understanding how it works, you most likely will hate it. I did too the first time I played it. However, once I better understood the controls, I found it to be enjoyable, but very tough. Catching the ball can be quite a challenge since it moves fast and when you switch sides the game centers you rather than placing you in line where you were on the other side. 
Also, when in the vertical strip, the enemies can sometimes appear right where you are, costing you a phaser ball. But if you try to stay in the safety of the horizontal strip, you may not have enough time to move into the vertical strip and line up a shot before they escape. This is one of those games where you can easily lose all your lives in two minutes or less. And personally, I never made it past the third wave. The game is just that hard. But despite this, I still enjoyed the game, even though I wish it was easier or at least had some easier difficulty settings. So where am I going to rank Quadrant? Well, if the difficulty was easier, it may have been higher, but as it is, I'm looking in the low 20s to high 30s. I would rather play the even rarer River Patrol at 29 or Dark Chambers at 30, but I will give it an edge over the well-made Fathom at 31. So out of the 91 games I've now ranked on 2600, Quadrant 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 is debuting at the 31 position. Quadrant can be enjoyable, but its learning curve, difficulty, and rarity will drive some retro gamers away. At this time, I'd like to thank Mr. Bob Laser from the forums over at Atari.io for lending me this hard-to-find game to review. Thanks, Bob! So what do you think of Quadrant? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons. If you'd like to financially support the show, you can do so at Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash gamer for more information. You can also follow me on both the Facebook or the Twitter. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the No Swear Gamer. Take care and go eat some runts. The candy, not the video game prisoner kind.